It's time for Windows Weekly, episode 127, our Windows 7 house party. Paul visits from a hotel somewhere in the Bowery of New York City. We talk about the Windows 7 launch, what to do when you install Windows 7, and a whole lot more. Get ready. It's time for Windows Weekly. Hasta la vista, baby. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's time for Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat, episode 127 for October 23rd, 2009. Hasta la vista, baby. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Audible.com. For your free audiobook and a whole lot more, visit audiblepodcasts.com slash windows. And by GoToMeeting. Do more and travel less with GoToMeeting. Make your next meeting a GoToMeeting instead. For your free 30-day trial, visit gotomeeting.com slash windowsweekly. And by Carbonite, the leader in online backup. Back up your PC or Mac off-site, securely and automatically. For a free trial offer, plus two free months with purchase, go to Carbonite.com. Offer code TWIT. It's time for Windows Weekly, a very special live edition brought to you via your iPod. Yes, magically, your iPod is connected through a time warp to October 27th. I'm sorry, October 22nd, 2009. The day Windows 7 came out. And here he is, the man who made it all happen, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Thorat. Yes. Super safe for Windows. It all by myself. It's all his doing. Hey, Paul. <laughs> the day the Vista died. The day the Vista died. Oh, man, it couldn't have come I just fast want, I want to say something because I find myself in the uncomfortable position of defending things that everyone else thinks are a joke. But I, I just want to remind people that, you know, when, Windows Vista is not as bad as people say that it is, right? I mean, it had some compatibility issues when it first shipped, absolutely. Um, I Honestly, I, I partially blame the uh, third-party hardware makers uh, for that stuff because, you know, Microsoft warned them this was coming. But, of course, uh, with all the delays in Vista, I don't think anyone took them very seriously. But the truth is, you know, when, when a version of Windows comes out, it's not just Microsoft, right, that has to respond. It's the, the hardware makers as well. Yeah, in fact, um, all the problems with Vista really were compatibility issues, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, I think there were some performance concerns, but, you know, Microsoft was going for the for the gold on that one, right? This was the major platform release. They did all the uh, underlying uh, subsystems completely over on, on, on Vista, and, um, you know, it wasn't going to run well on hardware that was a couple years old. I well, mean, that, that was, the, an, that was a, the point. That leads me to a question that I've actually not asked you, and I, I should have asked you a long time ago. Why is 7 then so much faster? Because it, it, I mean, yeah. there's no question it it's it's easier on resources. It runs on a netbook that Windows Vista couldn't even dream of running on. Why is right. it so much faster? Because honestly, this is the first time I think in the history of Windows where they took what they had and they just worked on that. They you know, they didn't it. go off and do some brand new thing, right? Yeah. You know, they really uh, they they dug out all the junk and all the nooks and crannies and they fixed it. You know, it's interesting and to know that. Uh, there's enough optimization in in yeah, software that like can be done. Th I mean that's a I have to say it's a significantly faster OS. I have very mixed feelings about this because uh, obviously Windows Seven is awesome. I love it and uh, it's beautiful. It's it's efficient. It's fast. It's all that stuff. Um, on the other hand, you know when you look at they made the big bet with Vista and it didn't pay off, and then they did uh, a lot of kind of tuning work and you know, little little things, you know, in Seven, and it really worked. You know, and what, what message does this send to the company, right? It's it's the message is keep doing that, right? you know. And and I want Microsoft to take the big bet sometimes. You know, I'm not saying they have to do it the next time, but, um, you know, it's very clear that not just within Windows, but when you look outside of Windows at the rest of Microsoft, everyone is looking at the success of Windows 7 and they want to emulate it. And uh, I think we're going to see a lot of this kind of stuff, not just from Windows, but from, you know, Windows Live and from Office and from all the other parts of Microsoft. Um, they're going to emulate this stuff. And that's too bad because I think, you know, sometimes you have to take that big bet, you know, even when they don't pay off. It's not unusual. I mean, this every other, some, sometimes people say every other version of Windows is good, right? Because you have to have this kind <laughs> yeah, of like iterative. Star Trek movies. Yeah, it's like Star Trek movies. There's an iterative yeah. process. Well, and like Star Trek movies, actually, there hasn't been a good one in quite a while. So 
<laughs> Maybe that uh, particular comparison is no longer apt. X um, XP wasn't so bad, except for I I didn't really like the user interface so much. Uh, Vista wasn't so bad, except for it was a little heavy and had some compatibility issues. And it seems to me Windows Seven has the best of XP and the best of Vista. It's very compatible. It's very lightweight. It has the cleanest UI yeah. Microsoft's ever done. In fact, one oh, of the no. reasons people some people say uh, Windows Seven appeals more to Mac users than to mm -hmm. Windows users. Have yeah, you heard that? Yeah, that's actually one of the statistics. Well, I don't know about more than Windows users, but one of the statistics that Microsoft had, I'll have to bring this up, uh, We had, they had us up at 7 o'clock in the morning to, um, you know, to, for a briefing or whatever. And there, there, was, there was the promise of surprises. And unless they were referring to the bagel I had for breakfast, there weren't too many surprises. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you mean you didn't get a, Paul, that, uh, a Steve Bomber autographed <laughs> a copy of uh, Windows 7 Ultimate? No. Uh, Oh, of course I did. Yeah, yeah and you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna give that away at the party, I know. Oh yeah, yeah, I have a couple of those, and we have we've gotten much other stuff uh, from Microsoft. So tell so tell me, our party's gonna have. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna ask you no, about it's... about the about the launch event. So so it started yeah, yeah, yeah. at seven in the morning. Well, we had a pre-briefing, uh, sort of a breakfast uh, event um, for some reason at seven o'clock in the morning, and. Uh, uh, you know, it's funny. I'm actually on the right time zone for once, right? I actually live here, and uh, not in New York, but in the Eastern time zone. And it was still, <laughs> it was just miserable, you know. Oh. And I underestimated how much time it would take me to get to this place uh, from my hotel, but that's okay. So I feel like I've been uh, up for you know 12 hours or whatever. And where was the event? You know, I don't even know the name of the place. I'd have to look it up. It was a crazy. <laughs> I just uh, sent a car for I, you. God, I, I swear to God, but the the comment that came out of my mouth as we pulled up to it was. Do they sell shoes here? You know, it just looked like a, you know, like a little factory, uh, you know, and, and someone told me that they had, you know, it's one of those renovated factories that they use for industry events of all kinds, oh, right? So okay. uh, it's, it's called Skylight Studios. And uh, I, who knows who, <laughs> how they name these things. The funny thing is, and Raphael made this comment and he's right, um, you know, the Windows Vista launch was such a bigger, bigger gala event than the Windows 7 launch, right? The actual event itself. You know, there was a lot of pomp and circumstance around yeah. uh, Windows Vista. Uh, Nokia, th was it Nokia? I'm getting my events mixed up. Actually, server might have been Nokia Theater, but there was um, just a big. No, Vista, party, I think, was at that big theater in Times Square. I remember that. Because, I, I, in fact, yeah. I met up with you uh, right afterwards mm -hmm. in New York because mm -hmm. I was that's in, right. in town. That's right. Outside. Yeah. That, yeah, that's right. I think it was the Nokia and, Theater, uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it was at the NASDAQ, or I don't remember. Anyway. Yeah, no, NASDAQ, NASDAQ, that's where it was, yep. I'm confusing I'm confusing everything, I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm working on about six hours of sleep here. But um, this event was very low-key in many ways. On the other hand, uh, someone from Microsoft made a very good comment along those lines where he said, you know, um, obviously anytime you're launching a product, you, you feel the need to sort of pound your chest a little and, 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 and talk it up. But he says, you know, really for the first version, uh, for the first time in a long time, you know, we can just let this thing sell itself. It's, it, you know, it's so good that, uh, you know, the reviews are great. Everyone loves it. There are no major problems. Um, it kind of sells itself. And it's kind of nice to have a product like that for a change, you know. If I were to pick a line um, that kind of that sums up all the reviews, and I'm, and I'm seeing it in many, many reviews, it would be best version of Windows ever. Sure. You agree? Sure. Yeah, and, and actually in my own review, one of the things I wrote in the uh, conclusion was that, you know, every time a version of Windows comes down the pike, um, you can say with some <laughs> clarity and some truth that, you know, this is the best version of Windows ever. But Windows 7 is more than that, right? Because it's, it's the right version of Windows for this time as well, right? It's not just, you know, better than the one that came before it. I mean, I think that's the minimum we might expect of any new version of a product. It should always be better. Right. But it's... It, it just addresses the needs of the day in a way that other versions of Windows in some ways never did. You know, I always felt with us, it, there were certain versions of Windows, and it wasn't just Vista. You know, Windows 2000 had a long time coming to market. And I remember uh, commenting to somebody at that time at Microsoft that, you know, you're taking so long with this version of Windows that all these things you're supposedly addressing are going to come and go, and that this product is going to be released into a market that has different needs. You know, that when you take so long to develop something, uh, you kind of lose track of what, what it is that's going on in the world. And, you know, Windows 7, one of the nice things about the reduced time frame of the development cycle is that it, it feels very, it does, it is very timely, right? It's a very timely release. It's, if you look at the features, 
they all make sense for today and going forward, right? They're not yesterday. You know, we're not responding to yesterday's concerns anymore. We're going to uh, ask and I hope answer mm -hmm. the the, okay. the longest standing question about Windows Seven that we have yes. yet to be able. You know what I'm talking about? In just a minute, of course I do. <laughs> you know where I'm going with that one. I uh, have I have stories. Leo. And do you have an and do you have an answer to that question? I think so. Oh think my God. All right, this is worth staying tuned for. But before we do that, I do want to mention our friends at Carbonite. We talk about Carbonite. This is a really good day to talk about Carbonite because, of course, before you upgrade an operating system, what do you do? What do you do? Anybody? Bueller? Bu you back up! Thank you. You back up. And, of course, the best way to do it is to do it automatically all the time so you don't have to think about this carbonite is the backup done right in fact a lot of people are using carbonite before their windows upgrade because you install uh, you know you back it up got all your data backed up with carbonite it backs up automatically all your all your you know precious files your your um you know your uh emails your financial documents your photos unlimited so you don't have to worry about how much it is five less than five bucks a month and you just back it all up. And now you install your new operating system and you can restore it all. And that's the beauty of it. Uh, I want you to try Carbonite right now. You go to Carbonite.com. Before you do this install, let's get the backup going here. Carbonite.com and use the coupon code LEO. You'll get, uh, I think, two weeks free so you can get that stuff backed up. And then if you decide to sign up afterwards, you get two months free. So this is a really great deal. Backup done right. Backup on the cloud, encrypted on your hard drive, and then encrypted there on the way there with 128 bit SSL. Just some stats. Since since Carbonite was founded in 2006, they've backed up over 25 billion files, and 2 billion of them have been restored to customers who would have otherwise lost them. That's kind of a nice feeling. They've restored 2 billion files to people who have had the worst happen. Off-site backup, you got to have it, and Carbonite's the way to do it. Carbonite.com. Use the coupon code LEO for a special deal. And by the way, Mac users, you can have it too. Carbonite.com. What are you laughing at, Paul? What are you laughing at? No, nothing. I'm hey, are you in an, you know, Somebody in the chat room says that you're in an Apple store. You're just pretending that uh, you're, you're just hunkering down so yeah. nobody can tell. Mm -hmm. yeah, I wish I was in an the, Apple store. The free Wi-Fi. Actually, I'm, I, I, listen, <laughs> I have stayed in lousy hotel rooms in my life. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been, all, I've been to Europe. I mean, if you've ever yeah. been to a hotel in room in Europe, the, uh, it's hard to describe this without having a visual, but... The toilet in my bathroom is positioned in the corner of a room such that if I did not have a right leg, I could actually sit on the toilet and face forward like a normal human being. <laughs> because the corner of the room intrudes into the front of the toilet. I'm not kidding you. I have to ride this thing side saddle like a lady with a dress wrap. This is true. Welcome to so, Manhattan where space is dear and your leg doesn't <laughs> yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah. So I'm in, a, I'm in my hotel room. Gee, which is, Christmas. Uh, All right. And you're having a brief. You from, you're, you're, instead of taking a nap, you're being with us. So I thank you very heartily, yeah. Paul. I really appreciate the, that. The, di the dim lighting um, should be an indication that I'm not in an Apple store. Yeah, that's true. I th I, I knew it, but I just thought I'd pass that yeah. along. So the sure. question that everybody wants to know, and you know, we've been asking for the last 1,800 episodes of Windows Weekly, is what about a clean yep. install? Uh, if I right. have the upgrade version, in fact, I do. I got my, uh, you know, I got my three. For $150 upgrade versions from Amazon, they came today. They're probably waiting for you when you get home. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, there's these are upgrade versions, but I would like to do a clean install. Am I going to be able to? Leo, let me tell you a story. <laughs> oh, dear. Before, before I answer that question. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I, uh, last night, HP and Microsoft had an event at the Museum of Natural History, which is a beautiful museum um, that I'll be revisiting with my family when they arrive tomorrow. Um, and I, you know, I met up with Ed Bott and Mary Jo Foley and some other people. And I was talking to Ed and I said, you know, I, I told him how I had gone to Microsoft for the literally upteenth time and said, hey, look, what's going on with this upgrade media stuff? You know, it's getting, we're getting down to the wire. You're launching the thing next week. Come on. You promised upgrade media. What's going on? And they said, you know, uh, we're not going to have upgrade media in time for the launch. Maybe the day of the launch, we'll buy some and hand it out there. You know, and I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me. So. I asked him about this, and he said he had exactly the same story. He's been bugging people since early in the year, again and again and again. You get the complete runaround. So for some reason, Microsoft has been very cagey about this, right? But today, I think I can tell you the reason why. You know, for all of the silliness around when you, Windows Genuine Advantage and Microsoft's anti-piracy technologies, which I think we can all agree are 
uh, anti-consumer and not the friendliest things in the world. They've done something wonderful in the Windows uh, 7 upgrade packaging for the first time, I think, ever. And you may recall going back in time that in earlier versions of Windows, it would actually ask you to insert a disk, like a floppy disk, of a previous Windows version to prove that you had the qualifying right, right. media. Right? Remember that? Right. Now, they stopped doing that because uh, at some point in time, they allowed uh, PC makers to customize these disks um, so much that they were sometimes not recognizable as qualifying media. So you actually had a legitimate copy of Windows, but it wouldn't work. Or, you know, in, in, uh, more recently, uh, many PC makers simply don't provide you with a disk. You know, it's something you have to create yourself uh, if you want to have it. And some people just don't have it. So the question here was, if you have the upgrade media, would you be able to do a clean install of Windows 7 without having a, you know, a version of Windows already on a hard disk, right, already installed somewhere on a separate partition? Or would you have to do that trick install like you had to do with Windows Vista where you could do uh, two installs in a row and it would fake it out and you could do the, um, the activation after that? Now, with the caveat that I have not personally tested this yet, I now have gotten uh, three emails from people who have tried this. And the way it works is you install it once and you activate it and it just works and there's nothing else to do. Yes. This is yeah. that means now, really in other words you don't need to you no everybody should buy the upgrade version unless you feel honor bound to give Microsoft extra money. Right? It is inconceivable. It is inconceivable that there's a person on this earth right. who would buy a copy of Windows in a store and not already own some version of Windows. That's a good point. If you have Windows 2000 or newer, you qualify. Right. Right, so, so let's just put it I'm this not, way. Yeah. Uh, except for a few lame Apple users, go ahead and use the upgrade. <laughs> I'm very comfortable with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might be. <laughs> um, That's I really good that. news. That is the best of all possible scenarios. Yeah, now, I've not tested this myself. I'm, uh, I, we talked, uh, Raphael, Tom, and I were talking about buying a copy in the store. We never ran into a store. I, I had to come back here to uh, record something for work and now to do this podcast so i'm actually downloading a an upgrade iso i'll test this in a virtual i'll machine, tell you what we'll do this at our windows 7 house party i'm going to launch a virtual yeah, machine yeah. i have the upgrade version right here and i will just right. install it and we'll see what happens we'll yeah, see well, if it asks for a disk or anything like that so yep that, now, that, that's really so, good news right so my guess is the reason they've never provided this to the press is they wanted this to be a happy little surprise. Like, look, we're not out, always out to screw you. You know, right. in this one instance, at least, we're, we're actually doing the right thing. So That's great. I, I believe it's true. I hope it's true. Again, I, with the understanding, I have not yet personally tested it. That's what I've been hearing. Wow, that's, a, that, that's quite, yay. Thank you, Microsoft. That is, and, and by the way, to give you an idea of how much email I get about this, <laughs> while you were doing your Carbonite ad, yeah. somebody, an email came in from someone <laughs> who said, hey, did you ever find out what's going on with the upgrade? <laughs> I'm not kidding. This stuff comes in all the time. It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I'll know before the show's over because uh, at least I'll have, I mean, I might not finish the install, but at least I'll have, I'll, I'll know whether well, it asks me for a disk. Is, we, right? No, no, it won't ask you for a disk. We know it's not going to do that. But the the key to it, the, the point at which you know it works is you install it with the upgrade media, you enter your uh, product key, and you activate it, and the activation works. And now you may not want to do that with one of the three copies you paid for, by the way. So maybe you should try this on a PC. Oh, yeah, because that'll, you know, be that'll be it. That'll be the one. That'll yeah. be it. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe I just won't activate it. But that wouldn't be a true test, no, 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 though, but that doesn't, that doesn't test anything. Yeah. You have to activate it. So. Yeah. I, I will do this test. I'm going to do it. I mean, this is important I'm going to have to take me, so. one for the uh, Gipper. Wait a minute. That's wrong. I'll, <laughs> I'll take one for the team, and I'll do it. By the way, these are beautiful. Did you see, you see these discs? They're just gorgeous. Yeah, nice, they've got yeah. green, the holograph on it. Uh, not only is it the best version of Windows ever, it's the best looking version. It's the prettiest version. The prettiest discs. Now, prettiest disc. I uh, did do a, 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 a install on a, a version that had the uh, 7100 RTM on it. And it's, uh -huh. it, as, as Vista did, I'm told, Vista did this also, it set aside the old install in a Windows.old folder and did a clean yep. install on top of that. Didn't format the drive, but just did a clean install on top of that. Is that right? Is that what's supposed to happen? Wanted to really do an upgrade, you could have forced it to do an upgrade. There's a there's a trick to get it to do that. Right. You edit that file, and uh, mm -hmm. we did that in the beta. But I don't. I yeah. you know what what is what, so have you? I guess it's too early to say. You haven't had a chance to try all of this. I've seen some reviews where people have done upgrades in a variety of scenarios. Um, there is a transfer yeah. wizard that will copy files applications yep. and stuff over that yep. makes it pretty easy it sounds like it works well it can be time consuming however 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, it's yeah. at least a couple of hours. It's been, I think, up to four hours in one case uh, that I experienced. But um, it depends on the system and what's on there and all that stuff. And then, of course, you have to reinstall your applications, you know. Um, I, I think they're making the upgrade a little harder this time on purpose in many ways because, obviously, the best experience is with a new computer. Right. And if you're running XP, I mean, uh, you know, chances are, you know, it's time <laughs> you know, for you to move ahead, I guess. Um, well, I'm getting a new computer uh, just just for this. But, uh, you yeah. know, I, any late model computer, up, so. anything that ran okay. Vista or came with Vista should be okay, shouldn't it? Yeah, no, my, my poster child for this is a 800 megahertz Celeron with 512 megs of RAM. Runs Windows 7 just fine. Wow. Wow, yeah, that's and that, that's something you couldn't get that sentence out of your mouth about Windows Vista without laughing. It's it's not even close. Right, right. So I am going to uh, install. I guess I'll give it the product key. Why not? I'll sacrifice here. Wow. I'll give it the product key, and I'm going to install. This is a uh, in in VMware Fusion, and it's mm -hmm. just going to be an install, a clean install, because I'm using a new, uh, an, yep. you know, a new version right. of Brand this. New. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. New hard new hard drives. Oh man, that's tiny. Wow. You know, just what a word of warning when you... Oh, good, there's another copy inside here. I was the, When you open this, it rips the serial number, but then there's the one inside, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. there, you know, you kind of knew there would be some problem. That's minor. What do you expect? I mean, anytime you have a new operating system, there are going to be a lot of people who are going to install on top of existing operating systems. There's always some percentage of problems. I have to say, this I have never heard of an operating system or any software as widely tested as this. Uh, Balmer right. said uh, yesterday in uh, one event that 8 million people had beta, beta tested this. Act, right, and actually I can give you a secret figure, uh, which is that, you know, because Microsoft has this telemetry, uh, telemetry data that they get, right? In other words, when, whenever anyone installed the, the beta version, they were automatically enrolled into the customer feedback program that they have. On the RC release and on the final release, it's an opt-in program. But back in the beta, the deal was, look, you're beta testing this thing. you got to give it, you know, we want the feedback. You have to provide us with this information. They actually have data from, they know uh, that actually the, uh, the testing pool was not 8 million. It was 15 million people. So uh, this means that 7 million people obtained the beta or release candidate version of uh, Windows 7 elsewhere right not in other words they didn't download it from microsoft they got it from, from BitTorrent or whatever <laughs> wow yeah but they were sending feedback to microsoft so it was okay <laughs> you know? right it's part of the test yeah yeah that's insane right i mean that's crazy did you say 15 million 15 million wow i can't yeah. am I, I mean i cannot think of a single uh instance of anything tested that thoroughly there, there's not a single instance of anything outside of Windows that has that many users. If you think anyway, about it. right? How would they do it? Yeah. Fifteen million. It's, yeah, it's crazy. So I'm running the install. I gave it a um, uh, you know a, a legit serial number. So we'll just we'll just see yep. what happens here. And uh, maybe so I will. I guess I'll have to go through the entire install for this to uh, to know yeah. that it worked. But this is a definitely yeah, and, an upgrade and, and, version. This is the fifty dollar upgrade version. Right, so when, when you're done, um, just type activate or active or the, the beginning of activate right. into the start menu search right. and manually bring up that product activation and, and have it do it. And if it works, you know, that's it. That's your answer. We did install uh, a clean, roughly clean install on this uh, Dell uh, 16. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so the first thing By I did, way, yeah. I watched that, okay. Oh, you're muted yourself. Whatever, you, whatever you're saying, it sounds like you're uh, insulting me because it's muted. <laughs> no, no, sorry. I have to say, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> you, you lying dog. <laughs> Why does he sound like the teacher from Charlie Brown? <laughs> you may, <laughs> you may be thrilled to discover I'm using that old headset I used to use all the time. Where I uh, you, you sat on it, myself. muted it uh, automatically. Yeah, 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 I remember that one. Yeah, same one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, it, that, you know, your install took longer than I would have imagined. Uh, in my experience, you know why? Seven I was a moron. No, yeah, it should have oh. taken 20. I was a moron and didn't. I took the disc out too soon. I saw that too. I kind of cringed when you did that. <laughs> you knew. In fact, you knew. When it came up, when it came up and it said hit any uh, key to, you know, boot yeah, up the CD. That's when I booted it. I, 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 go through setup 16 times in a row, you know? Yeah. It said, well, it says press any key, so. Well, I figured it was done with it, so I ejected. But uh, that was a mistake. It, you know what? I don't know. It's. it's 
it's sophisticated. You know, it, it, you it handled it very well. It just waited until I realized my stupidity, and then went on. And so it didn't crash. It did, you know, it didn't. It, right. it handled it well. And I've heard that's another thing. I've heard some really good anecdotal stories about uh, uh, backing out if it fails. Uh, mm -hmm. Gracefully and elegantly going back to the original version that you installed. Um, that's just a that's an urban myth because the truth is it never fails. <laughs> um, okay. But uh, okay. <laughs> so I'm installing it now. Now the first thing I did, and I think this, I'd like to know what your recommendation. First thing I did is I went yeah. to Microsoft.com/slash/security underscore essentials, and I put mm -hmm. the security essentials on there. I don't want to go on the net until I got that on there. It also wow. immediately had updates. Yeah, and yeah, they're they're weird. downloading now, and then I got another set of updates. So there there were definitely things I you know it, that it's fixing things right have away. Things occurred right since Windows Seven was finalized. In fact, the last big uh, batch of uh, security updates that Microsoft released for this month and security had some Windows Seven updates in it. So there is going to be some of that stuff going on. Okay. Then the next thing I noticed, it, it, you know, presumably if I've been using seventy one hundred, the release to manufacture. I'm using the final code, but there are assets that weren't on there. For instance, I have to say I'm really kind of enjoying uh, this kind of whack uh, desktop Wacky package. Wacky wallpaper. Yeah. Yeah, that, that stuff is actually, um, that's not in. That wasn't in the uh, pre-release. It, it wasn't in the, the RTM, no, actually. No. Right. Um, yeah, I saw, some of these, I saw some of this imagery at the... Show and I think that's what threw me because when we came in the door, there were some paintings on the wall, and one of them was one of the ones you just showed. And I said, "Well, that's kind of a weird picture, vaguely reminiscent of some of the stuff I've seen in Windows Seven. And then one of the other pictures was from Windows Seven. I thought, "Wait, what's going on here?" Right. And then I realized uh, some of these are new. This turtle with the ha the city on its back is in the, is the puzzle that they sent in the Windows uh, House Party that's right. back. And yes, the playing yeah. cards had another one. Uh, Doctor Kiki, who's uh, monitoring the uh, Twitter force uh, right now. Uh, mm -hmm. says that the wallpaper artist, thanks to Frost, uh, are a Japanese artist, Yuko Kondo, and uh, I, I would guess a Finnish artist, Klaus Hapaniemi. Um, okay. And the, they're really, well, you know, they're quirky, but in a way, it almost is, is Microsoft saying, hey, this, yeah. is a new com this is a new company. This is a little different than... The these, are, these are, I think, lovely. Yeah, they're fun, you know. They're different. Yeah, they so, are different. Yeah, and you know, if you're into the traditional kind of wallpaper, I, and I tend to kind of, and be, that's uh, still there, just, you can still have all. of Yeah, that. that stuff. Right, that stuff's all there. So, what uh, are there any other things that are different on this that I should look for that uh, from the uh, from the RTA? Yeah, no, not that I'm aware of. No, it's just that wallpaper. Yeah. Now I've done Microsoft any? Security Essentials. Is the next step? Uh, after after getting Firefox and Chrome, is the next step then get.live.com? It is for me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think you can complete... I don't think Windows 7 is complete without, you know, Windows Live Mail, Windows Live Movie that they Maker, didn't, Windows they Live Photo Gallery. They didn't, did not bundle any of that. Yeah. And, and you know, at this breakfast meeting this morning, uh, the one non-softball question was when I kind of uh, caused the uncomfortable silence by asking the guy why they didn't just put that stuff in Windows. And, of course, he came up with the normal spiel about, well, you know, uh, having it separate from Windows allows us to update them more frequently. And I said, that's fascinating, but that doesn't actually explain why it's not in Windows, because uh, all this stuff shipped already this year. You can just right. put it in Windows and, up and update right. it as you go. Oh, and by the way, for all of the massive updating you're going to be doing to these applications, you've shipped exactly one generation of the Windows Live tools since Windows Vista shipped. So, so far, at least, you haven't really been updating them any more often than the OS releases. So, <laughs> I, I get what you're saying. I'm just saying it's never happened. And it was just this sort of, you know, 20 seconds of uh, uncomfortable silence and then uh, some babbling about something else. I don't know. So there's no real good answer. <laughs> so but, I'm it downloads, it uh, doesn't download the whole thing. It downloads a stub that then lets right, you, it. Uh, you can pick, the, the pick parts, what yeah. you want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I uh, listen, uh, you know, the Windows Live Writer tool is uh, a blog a tool that I use I every day. It. It's fat. love it's, it. It's love awesome. it. Love it. Awesome. Yeah. What in else fact, is in there? Site, There's Messenger, well, Mail, like, Photo Gallery, Movie Maker, Toolbar, Writer, Family Safety, and Silverlight. Yeah, so aside from Family Safety, I basically install all of that. I'm not going to get Messenger. I'm, I'm not, I, I, I prefer yeah. to use a Trillion or something like that. Actually, I use sure, sure. Pigeon for my messaging. Writer's great. What's you know, Toolbar? Is that yeah. the MSN Toolbar? What is that? Yeah, you, no, it's the Windows Live Toolbar. You probably don't want that. I'll turn that on. It's IE only. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'll turn that off. Movie Maker, though, you think is uh, is much improved. Movie Maker is, is awesome. It's awesome. And it works with the AVCHD files that a lot of these camcorders now yep. create, which is great. If to work natively means it imports them fast and edits them fast. Yeah. Photo Gallery, I've been like using... I... See? Sorry? Sorry. I, was, I feel like I'm on top of my computer here. I'm going to back up a It's little. cute. I like the way... You, it's a really... It's, I, I... it's kind of a... You know, it's a little bye-bye birdie moment that we're getting here with Paul Therod. He's kind of like Anne Margaret... <laughs> With his, he's on the bed. Would you just kick your legs up behind you? Yeah, there yeah, we go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very, very Anne Margaret. Yeah, just, yeah. Just so we're clear. One. Just go bye, bye, birdie. That's <laughs> uh, very cute. He's got a little pillow under him. Uh, if you want to take a nap, go ahead. Just, just. So who else is there? Are other people there at your party? They're here. massive we numbers. Here. We've got uh, Dr. Kiki is here. She's going to continue the house party since we're right. done with Windows Weekly. She's, uh, she's talking. She's to running a. That looks like a Mac. It is a Mac. There's actually quite a few Macs in here. I don't know how where they came from. We <laughs> tried to expunge to them. Yeah. yeah, we're expunging the Macs. And he also has a, it's like a MacBook Pro. He's got a Mac. Okay, I'm it? sorry, but he's a, but apparently you didn't get the memo What's what's your name? Jerry. Case. Jerry is a uh, IT professional, so he's actually here. You know, kind of in okay. a in a, in a semi quasi uh, official status <laughs> to make right. sure that I don't hurt myself. <laughs> In like any, adult supervision. Yeah, he's adult supervision for the event. Don't poke yourself. And in you know, I already box. have because apparently I have a typo. In my mm -hmm. in the serial number uh, that I put in for the unintended install in VMware, and now it's in a yep. uh, some sort of hideous loop saying it's not a good number, uh, fix it. Yeah. So I I don't know what to do. Okay. I, I may not have the answer you're looking for before the show is over. That's okay. I g given the I think the that sounds pretty me. good. Yeah. No, I think it sounds yeah. like it's. In fact, one one guy wrote me and he said, "Look, what I'm going to do is, you know, the advice that you had for Vi for Vista. I'll do the." You know, the clean install, then I'll do the upgrade install, then I'll activate it. And I said, wait, wait, wait. I said, if you're doing that, I said, just activate it the first time. You know, you might not have to go through all that. Right. And he did. He said, he goes, yeah, it just worked. No problem. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I really, I really, really hope that that is exactly how it works because that's how it should work. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, as soon as I get out of this <laughs> horrible, horrible loop <laughs> yeah, yeah. that I'm in, I, I will, you know, I, I know the the fusion thing that you're talking about. I've I've done this before in fusion. Yeah, if you, if you have a typo, it's not good. Yeah, and it, you know, I appreciate what they're trying to do to streamline the install, right? But right. I don't know. You know, it's not like the Windows Seven installs all that difficult, um, or or time consuming on your part, right? There's right. not really a lot you have to do there. I think it's for IT pros, so they can just uh, you know have one single. Actually, for years, hasn't Windows done that itself? You have kind of an autom automated install, like a script. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. So I, I guess they're kind of trying to duplicate that experience. But unfortunately, I'm going on yeah. and on and on and on and on. I'll get out of it in a second. And, and by the way, if if during the recording of this podcast, a man with a knife comes out of the bathroom door behind me, I would like you to alert me. <laughs> Because <laughs> now that I'm actually looking at this imagery, it's it's uh, even more horrific than it. I... <laughs> no, but there is somebody yeah. sitting sideways on your toilet. It looks like I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's the call's coming from within the bathroom. <laughs> don't go in the house. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna the horror continues in just a moment. It's our Windows Seven launch party. I'm having a house party here at the Twit Cottage. Paul's just all alone in his hotel room, but you know, nothing new for Paul. I feel like I'm there. Oh, I'm <laughs> yeah, you're here in, in 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 spirit. You're here. I'm having a party as well, not at this moment, but <laughs> later on today. Yeah, and and once again, give a plug for the people who are watching at uh, our live broadcast. Uh, mm -hmm. The event will be at. It's at the Antarctica Bar in uh, Manhattan. It's on the Hudson. Starts at five thirty. Everyone's invited. I, you Should may you wear a jacket that sounds kind of chilly? Is there like actually it's not, beautiful? You know, it, so we're having this rare seventy degree day here. Although I guess oh, the cold front's nice. happening tonight, but uh, nice. yeah, I, I hope there's some kind of ice sculpture and or ice martini bar or something. But oh, thank you. Um, we're going to have all kinds of good uh, stuff to give away. There's you know the group of us that have our copies of Windows oh, Seven right. to give away that we got from Microsoft, but uh, and all the goodies that you got uh, in your gift bag there, your gift box. But we also got some additional stuff. So I think we're going to have. Uh, more copies of Windows and probably some of the I'm a PC type stickers and so forth. So if you are in New York, uh, please uh, come on by. Antarctica Bar. All right, we're going to take a break, come back with more of Paul and his pillow. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> pillow talk with pillow Paul talk. and Leo. With Paul. We won't do, I guess, uh, they would be asking too much of you to uh, mm -hmm. do a tool, a, a tip and a, and a pick today. Leo, I have a tip, I have a pick, and I have an audible as well. 
Dude, you rock. I keep trying to tell people that, but, you know. <laughs> All right, let me talk real quickly about uh, our good friends that go to meeting the Citrix folks. I'm meeting some chocolate. They gave us chocolate. Our Bitman, thank <laughs> okay. you. You didn't have, you're not having this at the Antarctica bar. This is something, uh, <laughs> some sort of European Milka chocolate with hazelnuts. That it is, is inconceivable that I would put anything in my mouth in this hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, whatever this you do, a, don't get that yeah. ultraviolet light thing that they have on CSI. You, no, you don't want to know. Would look like, it would look like a crime scene in here. You, I you don't, you don't, you just don't. You prefer not to know what protein deposits yeah. there are anywhere in that room. Let's just say I slept outside of the sheets last night. <laughs> Did you really? What 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 are you what is what are you staying in a flop house? What's the deal? No, it's actually a kind of a decent hotel. I, d I don't know what's going on in this room. It's it has a an amazing view of a wall. Uh, <laughs> there's an actual air conditioner in the window, like you would have, you know, in your house. When you arrived space. and gave them the, your name, did they go, "Oh, Paul, <laughs> you must want the presidential suite"? <laughs> oh, certainly. Let us know what you think of the toilet. <laughs> your room is waiting. <laughs> yeah. We haven't had anybody stay there in quite some time. As I noted, actually, to Ed Bot last night, you know, I feel like I could drag a dead body by the front desk and no one would notice. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know? Oh, Lord. New York is something. Because, yeah, you can have a normal, decent hotel and just be kind of mm, not yeah. the best. That's the hotel they say for people, you know, when you, when you, when you make a scene. You know they do that in movies sometimes, where you go to the hotel yeah. and, the, and 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 there's no. They say, I'm sorry, we have no room, and then you say, "Well, right. hey, President Obama is going to be here any minute now. Would you have a room for him?" Oh yes, sir. Sure. Well, I'll take his room because he's not coming. <laughs> and that's and that's the room they give right, you right. when you do that. And actually, I could picture people <laughs> kicking me out of here too, so that could happen. Maybe it's the sideways toilet it. suite. Uh. <laughs> it's got a name and everything. Yep. That's oh nice. lordy lordy let me tell folks about go to meeting this see if <laughs> you know in a way this ties in nicely if you've ever been on a business trip and you end up in a room yes. like that right <laughs> then and that's the time you say to yourself why do we do business travel why the expense the time the stress wouldn't it be better if you just have the have your meetings with go to meeting you never have to leave your office or home you set it up so easily just in fact you can do it free right now go to gotomeeting.com slash windows weekly and you're gonna we're gonna give you a 30-day trial of windows weekly no <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> that would be funny wouldn't it you know what let's do, let's do 60 <laughs> what the heck let's just give you a 30-day trial of windows weekly no we'll give you a 30 day trial of go to meeting you could try windows weekly for 40 days uh if you go there and uh, let me tell you it's so easy to set up you go to go to meeting.com slash windows weekly you're gonna you know fill out a form give me your email address and stuff and then and then, boom, you're, you've got it set up on your system. And the next time you're on the phone with somebody or somebody suggests you go stay in New York City at a lovely hotel with a sideways toilet, you just say, I don't think so. I've got GoToMeeting. Let's do the meeting online. You tell your client, go to GoToMeeting.com. Okay. Press that Join a Meeting button. You see that there? Oh, yeah. Here's the meeting ID. You give them the number. Suddenly, they're seeing your computer. They see your sales presentation, your product demo, your training session. You collaborate on documents. And all this for $49 a month. Unlimited meetings, including free teleconferencing and voice over IP. It's a great package. I want you to try it right now. Do yourself a favor. Do me a favor. Go to meeting. Even works on Windows 7. It does. That's the beauty of it. Go to meeting.com slash Windows. We thank them so much for their support of the Windows Weekly Show. And now I'm being handed this important note. A question from Sean Branch. If I have Vista Ultimate... Do I have to upgrade to 7 Ultimate, or can I upgrade to, let's say, Home Premium or Pro? Did somebody actually just hand you a piece of paper with that question on it? Yes, Dr. Kiki did. See, it's right here. I'd, I'd like to throw the concept of a paperless office by you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's so, no better way yeah. to do this. I guess you could IM me. I, I mean, could IM you. You could IM you me. You have to be watching the IM. It's easier to I got 18 things going on at once. Yeah, no. <laughs> this is how we do it at the Twit Cottage. They hand me it. Dane is always doing this. I Dane can, invented this system. Sure. I can scratch it out now and use the other side. Recycle. No, it's okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, recycle. <laughs> recycle. Do you remember the question, Paul, before you scratch it out? Do you remember the question? I do. Okay. So the answer is, as the owner of uh, Windows Vista Ultimate, you qualify for the upgrade version of any version of Windows 7. But if you want to do an in-place upgrade, you'll have to use Windows 7 Ultimate. So 
if you have Windows, uh, if you buy Windows 7 Home Premium upgrade version, uh, you'll have to do a clean install. But that's what you want to do anyway. We just kind of keep saying that. I mean, it's so lazy to do an upgrade in place, uh, and it's and it's just it's risky, don't you think? I do. Yeah. I mean, it works. You know, I can only go so far with the testing on this kind of thing. I've te I have tested several systems upgrading from Windows Vista to seven, but. Uh, you know, the, let's be honest here. I mean, I don't use Windows Vista daily anymore. Um, uh, there was one of those systems in particular that was, in fact, a, a daily use system for many months that I basically used for video encoding work and so forth. Um, everything went great on all of my upgrades, but I don't know that, you know, that's real world enough to, uh, to say. I, my experience over many years with upgrades, in-place upgrades, is that they're, they never result in a system that's as clean uh, and as no. long-term viable as a clean install. Right. Always do a clean install. You, you know, you, you're in this for life, yeah. kids. Now, I am uh, installing, still installing the uh, Windows uh, Live stuff. What else am I... Oh, you are. Yeah. I've okay. got Security Essentials. I've got Windows Live. Yep, yep. Now, I normally will go out. I'll get Chrome. I'll get Firefox. I use mm -hmm. Fox Marks, which is really great in a situation like this because it'll synchronize my bookmarks and passwords, and I'm, I'm up and running right away. Right. Um, what, what else, else? What else do you do? I mean, I guess you know, there's, there's Office. There's the apps you use. Yeah. So right. In my case, uh, Office is absolutely one of the things. You know, one of the things I sort of wanted to talk about. We can talk about this more next uh, week, but this falls into this category. Is um, you know the notion of uh, critical technology. You know that stuff that you absolutely can't live without. And what's interesting is you know we have a software pick every week, and some of the stuff kind of comes and goes. You know, um, uh, the stuff that you might use for a little while, and then something else comes along, and you move along, and Every once in a while, you hit on something that just sticks, and it's wonderful. You know, and there are things that I happen to use, like the home server or the Amazon Kindle, uh, or even the iPhone, where they're just, you know, they're transformational, right? There's amazing technology. Yep. You can't live without yep. it. Yep. Everything else sticks. And I'd have to say, you know, it's interesting. I was just doing this. I was looking back over the software picks from the past year, and there's one uh, that has just made a huge, huge uh, change in the way that I do things, and it is the uh, last pass. Um, plugin that works in IE, it works in Firefox, and on uh, the Mac, it works in um, Safari. And th there's a version coming out for Chrome as well. And what it basically is is a, a cloud-based uh, password uh, saver, you know, and auto filler of forms and passwords and so forth. Uh, it will generate long passwords that are hard to crack, and you have the central database that's always available up in the cloud. And if you buy the Pro version. You can, you can get all the stuff I just described for free, but if you get the pro version, uh, there's some iPhone compatibility and some other stuff as well. And uh, it is an absolutely amazing tool. And, uh, and I've been looking for something that would uh, prevent me from using the same or similar passwords at all the websites I go to and so forth. Because obviously, if someone gets into one of those, then uh, they could possibly get into everything that you do. And uh, LastPass has uh, just been an amazing thing for me. So when I install... Windows. I mean, basically, just what you said. You know, Security Essentials, uh, Live, Firefox, and then I go LastPass is next because you know, really, the first. And as I'm doing this, of course, you're doing the Windows updates as well, and a lot of that stuff is about security when you think about it. Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah, and then your applications, and there's everybody has something different. Yeah, you know, I put that, Putty it's... on there because I need a terminal. I do weird. I put some weird yeah. stuff on there. What do you use? I'm sure you don't use mm -hmm. Notepad. What do you use for a text editor? <laughs> yeah, doesn't everybody need uh, a text actually, editor? No, I don't. I don't do much text editing for actual text documents. I do, in fact, use Notepad. Okay, but I use uh, Visual Studio, and then the, depending on this laptop, I happen to have the Express version of Visual Web Developer. Oh, so you uh, use you use Pro stuff. Pro stuff. There's a I use Note Tab yeah. Note. What is it? Note Tab Plus, which is a great, Note Notepad Plus. Fuchs. I think is the name of it. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah, yeah uh, I know, I've never really seen the need for that kind of thing personally, but. I think it depends on what you're doing, right? Um, I know on the, you know on the Mac the uh, text editor that they have that might just be called text editor or whatever the name of it is. Uh, you can save RTF files and uh, so forth. It's actually very useful. Something like that on the on Windows would be nice. You know, um, something like halfway between Notepad and WordPad, right? Right. You know, WordPad. I, I have no WordPad. Use for, but well, I have to say though, if you don't have Office, WordPad looks so much yeah, like it's not Word. Bad. It looks like Office. I, but, you know, and and I've actually looked at. Uh, there's been a, a not-so-subtle change in my workflow over the past year. I, I used to send Word documents around to people I work with, but now a lot of it's done through the web. So I'll yeah. actually post things on the web, and people will edit it in the web. Yeah, we use but Google start, Docs almost all the time now. 
Yeah, so that really changes the way you uh, you do things. Yeah. It occurred to me. I don't you feel the I mean? urgency to put office on here. So the reason I do is I write long form articles uh, that require grammar checking and spell checking. And you probably submit and, them as uh, Word documents, right? I mean, a lot of publishers. Well, I know when well, I write books, they need Word. The books I do, yeah, but I mean, I mean, because I'm just talking the articles, you know, that I do for my own sites and so forth. You know, one of the things you missed with WordPad is just the automatic checking of what you're writing, right? And uh, that's actually pretty important. So. Um, certainly a, uh, an open source, uh, open office type uh, solution would be okay. Google Docs, I think, has some basic functionality around that. But, um, you know, I'm comfortable in Office and, uh, you know, there are certain keyboard controls and, and just uh, esoteric features uh, that are just valuable to have. So I'm not at the point where I can give up Office. Um, Lately, I tried no, to... I'm okay with that. I, have you ever used Zoho Office? I mean, yeah, I've looked at that. That's interesting. Yeah. You know, I think there's something wrong here because, it, again, it says I have the wrong key. And I was very careful about entering that key in careful. This, you know, I'm going to turn so off the unintended. So one thing you could do is, yeah, just don't do the unintended. Don't yeah. put the key in during install and put it in afterwards. So, yeah. And and then not. Oh, you know what? It like thinks it's Vista because it doesn't have a Windows 7 on the, this is an older VMware. So okay, maybe that's maybe that's certain. the problem. I should just upgrade yep. to VMware 3. <laughs> <laughs> What are you laughing at? People Nothing. are laughing right. at Everything, me. Everything. Jeez. You're very efficient. <laughs> People are laughing at me. They're mocking me. All right. Well, I, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to make this show longer and longer so that I can, I can uh, yeah. get this solved. Because I really want to be able to sure. leave the show saying. Hey, listen. We've waited nine months for the answer to this question. Right. So, what's the big deal? You know, what's another 30 minutes between what's friends? What's the big deal? Know? Yeah. There's a question from some. We, we have a question. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Mm -hmm. Kiki. I'll actually say it this time. Hold on. If you're going to do that, I have to give you a microphone. Hold <laughs> I, on. Did, I didn't mean to shame you into doing it. this. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, Dr. Kiki now has a question. There's a question from E Geniuses on Twitter. <clears throat> I would like to ask mm -hmm. Leo about what he thinks of the Windows 7 home groups. Well, don't ask me. Ask the, ask the uh, wizard. Mr. Thurrock. I have not used home <laughs> groups. Now, this is a new feature in Windows 7 that's kind of interesting. It gives yeah. you, when you do the install, it gives you like an ID, which is bizarre. A yeah. long number that, what, are you supposed to write that down? Yeah, no, I have a post-it note. It. Actually, the first thing you should do with home groups, if you, if, and I, I don't set up home group during a setup, personally. I go in and do it afterwards. But if you're doing that initial home group setup where you're, you're the person establishing the home group, yeah, my, you know, Windows will uh, assign you a password, essentially, right? Um, the first thing you should do is go into the home group control panel and change it to something you'll actually remember. Uh, because that's ridiculous, you know. That that's a silly. Uh, it's re it's like a it's uh, like a, a GUID or something. It's really a long number. Well, I think what they're trying to do is prevent the thing where people um, don't use a password, right? Because right. Uh, you know, even in the demo they gave today at the keynote, which actually was unintentionally funny, um, he was showing how easy it was to connect to a home group. And once you're in a home group, you can see all the content on the other side. Oh, and by the way, I can make modifications. And the modification he made was to delete a photo on the other person's PC. Oh, that's nice. And I'm thinking to my, yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> myself, you know, well, everyone, there's a kind of a quiet murmur at that point. Really. Are you sure that's, hmm. you know, are you sure that's such a great... You really want to show that feature off? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, the way the home group, I mean, you can actually set it up differently if you want to get in there and, and certain people can have, you know, read only access and all that stuff. But I mean, the idea behind it is you're taking something that's fundamentally hard and you're making it easier. And, and it certainly um, accomplishes that. The thing I really like about home groups, though, is that it works in tandem with that library feature, right? And, and libraries in Windows 7 are not just another way of doing special shell folders like documents and music and, and so forth. Uh, it is a way of aggregating content that could be on uh, in multiple different places, not just on your PC, but across the network, and allowing you to share that as a single unit through home groups. And that's what that really does. So it, it takes something that used to be hard. You know, if you can imagine uh, a PC with multiple drives attached to it, maybe on one drive you have all your movies, on one drive you have your music and photos, you know, and your documents, and maybe the other drive has, you know, whatever, your software that you install and so forth. If you want to share all that stuff in Windows, you know, you can do it. But it's a step-by-step -step process. You have to share each, uh, you know, folder or partition uh, independently. And with home groups, that content is all aggregated to the appropriate libraries. And then through uh, home groups, it's shared as a single unit to whoever you uh, give access to that uh, information. So it's actually a, an incredible feature. I mean, the only downside, of course, is that it doesn't work with down-level versions of Windows like Vista and XP. So you all have to be using 7. Yeah, but we we should all be using seven. I would imagine by the time we record the next show that everyone Everybody. is already going to be on seven, <laughs> so we don't have to. Uh, 
We Everybody don't have to worry about that. Everybody will be using seven by then. <laughs> sure. <laughs> a number of people are telling me on Twitter, we have a, we have a Twitter uh, tag for this house party, W7HP. A number of people are using that tag to communicate with yeah, me. Yeah, so it's, I saw that. And actually, I, at the risk of looking unsophisticated, I've never seen a Twitter tag before. So what does that do? Uh, it, you know, it's a ad hoc uh, addition to Twitter's capability that uh, lets you search for uh, posts. So it started with conferences. So if you're at CES, you know, you'd write CES09 with a, with a pound sign in front of it. And then people okay. could follow all the tweets from CES or South by Southwest or whatever. So but now they're using it. it, it and if you go to Twitter you, on the front page, you'll see trending topics. Those are all hash, mostly all hashtags. Yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So that's how people can kind of say, oh, we're going to, you know, we're going to do a topic. And um, and uh, and so that way I can I can use a search, uh, a, a Twitter search, or I'm using TweetDeck to follow everybody who uses that tag. So okay, it's a, it's actually uh, great. Uh, one person, uh, Rola Mira, is asking: Do home groups span across the internet, or are they just on the LAN? They're LAN only, aren't they? That's right. Yeah, yeah. they're the LAN only. Um, they do have a media. Uh, I'm sorry, it's called uh, remote. What is it called? <laughs> Remote sharing feature that allows you to share uh, digital media through Windows Media Player over the Internet. Um, but, that, you know, obviously it's primarily for music or video, not uh, so much for photos, but uh, or and certainly not for documents uh, or printers. Um, and that works fine. Uh, it requires a little bit of setup, but once you get it going, it is kind of cool to be on the road like this and bring up Windows Media Player, see your home library show up. I love that. And be able to play content. Yeah, yeah, it works really well. So in a way, it's kind of a, a gateway drug to Windows Home Server. <laughs> right, right. Just the beginning. Uh, yeah. Is there is there is there seven uh, seven update for Windows Home Server, or is it just desktop? There's not one yet. Uh, there's going to be an update, uh, not to the server that will make it like Windows Seven, rather uh, an update for the server that will let it work uh, more uh, seamlessly with Windows ah, Seven. Okay. Right. So a Power Pack Three update, and that will be out before. I think it was the end of November was the date they were talking about, or maybe the end of October. It should be out soon. Great. All right, we have a question from the audience. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Just shout it out because we don't have a microphone on you. Go ahead. With that streaming thing, does it have to have some kind of certified thing for Windows? I mean, like, will it be a TV to be able to stream your media on? Okay, what can you stream the media to? I guess anything with a Windows Media Extender a capability? Or? <clears throat> you mean within your home network? Yeah, using the home group. Could you use a home... Windows Home Group capability yeah, so, to stream uh, content? To uh, anything other than a Windows right, 7 so computer? Yeah, it's not technically the Home Group that's doing that. So that, that occurs to Windows Media Player. Uh, it will uh, stream to any DLNA, I think it's 2.1 and up, uh, compatible device. And, uh, you know, in the past, that was such things as the Xbox 360, which works fine. If you have one of those uh, popcorn uh, media player uh, devices, looks kind of like a router that works as well. At, at the um, launch, they showed us some devices I'd never seen before, including a, a coming generation of TVs, uh, a new version of the WD uh, TV device. Um, I'm trying to think what else there was. A digital picture frame. So there uh, are third party. You're, yeah, there's a lot of third Yeah, versions. so what you're basically getting is sort of like the... Uh, the the Windows 7 experience kind of broadcasted out to different kinds of devices. Oh, there was an, uh, uh, a home stereo receiver of some kind as well that was compatible with this. So there's going to be more and more of this stuff coming. But, uh, yeah, you can. It's kind of funny. It's, it's, uh, if you think about sitting down in front of an Xbox 360, obviously in the past you could access your home media over the Xbox 360. You'd have to go through this interface, and you were kind of pulling it from your PC over the home network. With Windows 7, there's also a push capability. So from the central console... Uh, of your PC, you can push this media to any of the compatible devices and PCs that are around inside your home network using the Play 2 feature. And one of the awesome demos they did, I think they had 19 different devices running at once off of one Windows 7 laptop. Uh, it was broadcasting, you know, HD media, uh, I'm sorry, HD video streams, you know, music, photo slideshows to, I think it was 19 different uh, devices around the network. It was pretty awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. So you went to a pre-launch pre event, and then the launch event followed that. Did they have donuts? <laughs> they had uh, bagels. Bagels? It's like a donut had, without uh, the sugar. Yeah, they yeah. had croissants. Ooh. I can't claim that they had bagels. They didn't have locks on, I mean, or donuts, rather. Uh, they had locks on oh, the bagels, which was nice. Very nice, yeah. very nice, very tasteful. We got to watch uh, Steve Ballmer on, uh, on uh, NBC, you know, with Matt Lauer, which was um, frightening. 
Um, <laughs> I don't know. You know, are they? You know, are they um, doing a big like campaign of some kind to commemorate this? You said it's kind of a little bit downplayed over the Windows Vista launch. Is well, there... I meant the launch itself. I mean, I, I think from a broader industry perspective, when you look at what they're doing, you know, Microsoft is selling uh, computers on their website, right? Which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Um, they're having, uh, um, they're amazing deals from PC makers right now. That's what they, um, that's somebody saying in the chat room that they had a lot of PCs at the event, like cool looking stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but some of the, some of the offers that some of the PC makers have are insane. So for example, and I'm, I'd have to check to see what the, uh, if there's a time limit on this, because I think that there's a there's a program right now called Seven Days of Windows Seven, and so maybe it's a seven day, you know for the next seven days only. Right. So for example, at Best Buy, for twelve hundred dollars, I mean think about this. This is absolutely insane. What you get, you get three computers, right, and a wireless network uh, router. Uh, one of the computers is a slimline HP desktop with an eighteen point uh, five inch monitor. There's an HP Mini netbook. And then there's a, I think it's a 15-inch uh, media, what they call a media-savvy laptop as well. So you get three computers for $1,200. <laughs> the with same an, price as, a, an, as an iMac. With, yeah, the same <laughs> price as a, like, a net, uh, like, yeah, like a MacBook. Or I whatever, think it's aimed know. at the iMac, Eleven ninety nine is the low-end iMac. Yeah, so for, so for the price of one iMac, you get three computers and a, and a router. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it's crazy, right? It is, it's like crazy Eddie pricing. You know, one of the things I, you know, people should remember, too, I get a lot of questions from students, is Microsoft has an offer for students. It's not just in the United States. Um, it runs through uh, January, th somewhere, I think January 3rd of next year. Um, and, and I don't remember the countries off the top of my head, but it's all around the world. U.S., Canada, Europe. Um, it will be in Australia sometime early next year as well. But it's basically $30 um, to get uh, Windows 7 Home Premium or Windows 7 Professional. Upgrade version, right? Yeah. Um, that's a tremendous deal. But you have to be a, a registered student. You have to be, well, you have to have an EDU uh, mailing address. Right. Uh, um, yeah, I think it's windows741.com or something like that. Yeah. Now, in some countries, including the United States and lots of Europe, they're having a, a deal where you, <laughs> you it's so weird, you buy, I have to, I have to look this one up. You, I think you buy a computer with that has Windows 7 on it, and then you get a discounted copy of Windows 7. It's like... Um, half price so in other words for people who have a second computer well, or in other is, words that's smart you want to buy a new computer but you want to keep using your existing computer you buy a new computer with windows 7 and then you get a copy of windows 7 for your other computer for half price that's smart i think that's the deal if i remember it correctly yeah it's crazy i mean the the, the uh, i need to look this stuff up there's so many crazy um uh deals being made available then all all the major pc makers have uh, special systems now that are coming out you know with windows 7 included um, some of the ones I start the show that were particularly impressive are, you know, that new Dell Adamo laptop. The That's new a one. beauty, isn't it? Uh, the thing is so thin, you know, when you look at it like, profile-wise, it literally disappears. And uh, there's, a, there's a machine from HP, I think it's called the Envy, uh, kind of a 13-inch MacBook-looking uh, kind of computer, no optical drive. Um, this one was a, just a pretty machine, and it had a really nice kind of feel to it, um, just a nice, I don't know, grippy... Surface. It was just a neat looking laptop. It's made of rubber. It's a rubber laptop, is what it is. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So, 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 were, so uh, talk about odd stuff. I'm at, yeah. I'm at the Microsoft.com site, and mm -hmm. uh, they've got the reviews are in for Windows Seven, and they're all from Twitter. Windows yeah, Seven is from... good. <laughs> it's, it's, right. So, Windows Seven pretty well, good. <laughs> this is this is yes. on the front page of Microsoft.com, which, which begs the question. Uh, how is it that the Mac community has not gotten together to blast this thing with anti-Windows 7 stuff just to see if any of it could get through, right? You know, like, Windows 7 is for wimps. You know, something like that. Twitter user. Twitter user yeah. 9-11, oh, October 22nd, well, you know, 2000. Obviously, this is, uh, they just had their deal with uh, between Bing and Twitter. Right? Oh, this get, is the Bing stuff. Yeah, this is their little show-off. That's what of, it is. Uh, what do you think of that? Now, yeah. my initial reaction is, well, you know, it makes me mad that, that Twitter is making kind of an exclusive deal with a search engine. Then they, then they did the same deal with yeah, I was Google, say, so it was okay. And, yeah. yeah, right. right. Yeah, but, Google said, yeah, we have it too. But, of course, Google's is uh, some months away. And Microsoft's also doing a similar deal with Facebook, which Facebook. I find uh, even slightly more disturbing. Um, well, now, you know, with I, Facebook, I at, you have to explicitly say... 
Right. No, of course. I want to share my status updates uh, publicly. Maybe maybe I'm just uh, old fashioned, but I, I think of Twitter as being uh, your a public broadcast, right? right? A public discussion. Yeah, Facebook is absolutely uh, not. Yeah, not no. a place where you have a, a person to person discussion. Right. Whereas, um, you know, Facebook is more of a way that you get together with people you actually know, and you have conversation. You know, you get together with them and uh, you you update them on your life and so forth. You know, so to me, it's a different between public and private in some ways. So I know that there's a public, you know, there's a, a public More and Facebook more people are using anyway. Facebook publicly. I think that's the thing. And that's probably, yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's what it is. It's kind of a coming of age of Facebook or sure, something. Sure. Yeah. Sure, the puberty of Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> the ugly, acne-filled puberty. This is good. This is, I think you're right. It is the twin, twin uh, the uh, Bing search because it's clearly not. It's clearly not being curated very well because there's the, some of the praise is kind of luke, lukewarm. Like, here's one: unless something amazing comes out, it's going to be a home run for Windows Seven. See, I don't know. Yeah. Why, I don't. You know, that's I, not. I can't, it, well, unless okay. So I just <laughs> give Microsoft unless a little bit of credit. Else I, unless something out. horrible happens. <laughs> yeah, I would never put this on my own homepage, <laughs> right? But you know, they're so confident, right, in Windows Seven that they feel like they can do this. Maybe, maybe that's the right way to look at this. Um, yeah, and I guess but it does again, say if something. If I was a Mac guy, I would be all over trying to spam this with stuff that you made it look. This bad. is coming from, by the way, more than just Twitter. I'm seeing Dig user. I'm seeing Posterous, uh, and of course, the Dig user, unlike the other people, is uh, you know kind of not spelling words correctly. Uh, <laughs> No, I shouldn't say that. I, Maximum I PC listen. member. They're scanning all these. You know what? I think this is a Bing search. They're just searching for yep. Windows 7. Sure. Um, okay, Mac users, get to Which it. Which would make it really easy to. It should be, yeah. I wonder if it's curated <laughs> at all. That's a problem. I wonder if yeah. it's curated yeah, at all. I, listen, there must be someone looking at these. There's like, got to be. It just does, it doesn't make sense. So seven days of Windows uh, 7 savings is is a place to go if you want to look for uh, laptops. And they I, they are doing, there's a countdown on the page. So I think they're serious. And by the way, they're literally selling these from the Microsoft Store. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, that's really interesting. They yeah. their first Microsoft Store today in Arizona. Arizona, the first Microsoft Store was uh, open today. Scott, Scott right. Dale, Arizona. Huh. I'm not sure. Yeah, they did, they did the first store on the, the launch of Windows 7. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's in the Fashion Square Mall. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to get out there. I still have friends in Arizona, so I try to get Really? You still have friends actually. there? Boy. I still have friends. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Boy, wow. I do as much as I can to alienate people, but they keep coming back for you more. So. <laughs> I, well, I'm writing that down. I think we have a title. I still have friends in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> I still have friends in Arizona. Actually, my friends in Arizona will love that title. <laughs> But the, you and didn't even know the backstory. Right say, my sister will be mad because I, you know, I also have family there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to know the backstory. Paul used to live there. But if you don't know that, it just sounds kind of like sad. I still have friends in Arizona. It, yeah. It's like a, uh, yeah, like I'm on the road or something. You know, I still I'll have friends in Arizona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. All right, we're going to get to our uh, tip of the week. Anything else you want to say before we uh, uh, get to the tip of the week and the software of the week? Any other things that you've noted with Windows 7? Uh, let me look. Let me see if I have anything here. I'm just installing uh, Fox Marks now. I've got Firefox on here. I feel like this this install on the Dell couldn't have gone smoother. Uh, it's It feels you know solid and fast and looks gorgeous. I'm using those kind of strange, surreal desktops. I think it's beautiful. It's really responsive. Yeah. It feels very responsive and... You know, for the first time since 95 on the Windows side, you know, people stood in line for this thing, which is crazy. Really? And uh, Amazon came out and said, you know, the, the pre-orders for this thing were more than the combined pre-orders for XP and Vista. Wow. Back when those old lists were releases. And that's, I mean, that's, uh, that's just really impressive. Uh, I just did a, I did a radio show earlier uh, with uh, Bill Handel uh, out of Los Angeles, and he asked me how many copies of Windows... Do you think yes. will be sold? And I didn't really have an answer. Um, you know, I said I, I said kind of I would I would expect by the end of the year fifty million. What, what would you What would be the actual number? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it's hard to predict. Of course, in the industry, three hundred million computers in a year, typically, right? Right. right. But right now, um, you could divide that by twelve and do the math, and and maybe double that number or something, and that would be a good starting point. I, you know. And that's the type of thing that comes up in the con in the context of Windows uh, Vista, you know, for all the disaster that it supposedly is. Um, you know, at least half those PCs were actually sold to consumers. And uh, at least half of those PCs, of course, came with Windows Vista. So, you know, you're talking um, uh, roughly 100 million computers a year probably going out the door with Vista on it for the wow. past three years. So, 
not terrible. Uh, the numbers for Windows 7 are going to be much, much better because in this case, uh, people aren't going to be downgrading like they did before. And even businesses, I think, are going to see um, kind of an interesting uptick there. So, you know, end it by the end of the year, I mean, we're only talking about two months here. So, um, I, you know, I don't, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, I remember, uh, or I should say, I, not that I remember, uh, somebody sent me an article from Windows 95 time frame where they were talking about how some people anticipated that Microsoft could sell as many as 30 million copies of that system between August and the end of the year. Okay. So I wasn't so, so far off. That, wasn't, that was a pretty good estimate. 50 million. Yeah. So, I mean, I, the, you never know. I'm looking at video. This very shaky cam of video. looks like a camera phone video on YouTube of the opening of the Microsoft store. I've never seen anything look more like an opening of an Apple store. Employees yeah, yeah. waving people uh, in, this cheering, right. like high-fiving. Yeah, yeah. There's It's jammed. And it looks like an Apple store. It has They're that same... wearing the, the neck badges. Yeah. It's very... <laughs> you know, they cloned the thing. Sure. It's interesting. I mean, but but clearly a success, at least on day one. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, I guess we'll see. Then there's a bunch of people twittering, you know. That's funny. You can't you can't go to an event anymore that there aren't half the people out there looking at their phone going, dee, 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 dee. I, I can assure you that every single day they will field questions from people who will say, I don't see where the iPods are. Right <laughs> <laughs> we have Zoom. Yeah. No, no, I, I was looking for an iPod. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, take a break. My my Windows Seven uh, install is is grit good. I can't install it on my Mac because I have an out of date version of uh, alas of uh, VMware Fusion. But I will. Uh, I'm gonna. I think we're gonna take it as read that it does do that upgrade. Uh, that's pretty yep. exciting. That's really exciting. Yeah. Um, maybe you know what? I'll go while while I'm doing the commercial. I'll go uh, get the latest uh, Virtual Box from Sun because that's free. And, uh, you know, that's a, I've, I've been using that for, for virtualization on the Mac, and it's, it does a pretty good job. Sure. I'm going to down sure. that. I don't know why it's not on here. I'll download that. Meanwhile, let's talk about Audible.com. Audible, of course, our great sponsor. They are the folks who do those wonderful audio books. Couldn't, I tell you, uh, I couldn't survive without Audible. I was just talking to somebody about my, uh, the, the old days when I commuted from Petaluma right. to San Francisco it was at least two hours on the road if there was no traffic every day, usually three to four, sometimes even five hours a day. I would have been, ugh. yeah, ugh. I would have been nuts if it weren't for sure. Audible. I started in 2001 and Audible really saved my life. Uh, I've read hundreds of books. That's the beauty of audible.com. You get to read books in those down times when you just, you know, that are completely wasted. I was talking with, with, with this person about the commute because she had just driven up from uh, San Jose. And uh, and she said, you know, I've been doing. I, we both had started doing this commute in the '90s. We didn't even have cell phones. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what did you, you right. sit? You listen to the radio. I mean, what would you do? Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank goodness uh, for Audible.com. Now I can uh, I can listen to great literature or just fun books to trash uh, sometimes mm -hmm. and to into serious stuff sometimes. And I just feel like my time is no longer wasted. It is really a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. Now you can try it for free by going to audible.com slash windows. You sign up for that gold account. That's a book a month. I'm a, I'll be honest, even though I don't have a long commute anymore, I'm still a platinum guy because I like two books a month. But if you sign up for the gold account or the platinum account, your first book or two books is free. And you can cancel at any time and keep those books. So we like to give you a little recommendation for something you might want to download from audible.com and because paul is a great audible fan he always has a good recommendation what do you what are you listening to next so the next one is actually the the sequel to freakonomics and it's called super freakonomics it's super freak a great, i love yeah. freakonomics stephen levitt yeah it's amazing and um i'm so excited there's another one of these you know and i love the tagline for this one because you know if you're familiar with freakonomics it's they make these incredible comparisons of things that you would never think could ever be compared and, and and they draw these amazing conclusions so the the, <laughs> the three uh, i guess they have three from this one it's a uh, how is a street prostitute like a department store santa what do hurricanes heart attacks and highway deaths have in common and can eating kangaroo save the planet <laughs> so That's these questions are apparently answered in this book so far out yeah yeah it's good stuff i listened to a freaking the original freakonomics on audible in fact yeah. if you haven't listened yep. to that Get the platinum yeah. plan, you get both of them. <laughs> right. Uh, but, you know, that's the neat thing. It's not just nonfiction, it's fiction. Uh, you and I read a lot of thrillers. I'm reading right now a history of Hollywood in the 70s that Andy Anako recommended. I just feel like it keeps my brain working. It keeps me in touch with the non-tech world. You know, I 
spend all day sure. in the tech world. But sometimes yeah. I feel like, you know, there is another world out there, and Audible really connects me to it. There actually, there actually isn't. Uh, oh, Leo, but. it's an imaginary. I'm looking through <laughs> the keyhole okay. in a even, wonderland. Even if, it's ima even if it's imaginary, it's okay. <laughs> no, I have a very active imagination. I actually think that there are real people out there doing real things, and it's ju not just you and me, Paul, sitting here in our jammies. <laughs> it's kind of a, a very sad version of the Matrix. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, if we were going to make it up, you'd think we'd have done a little uh, bit, you know, more, you know, yeah. more spectacular. There, in fact, is, there's no alien race, uh, suck, you know, suctioning off our lifeblood as uh, energy. It's just... Uh, it's just us. This is it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <This is> it. <laughs> not, not really that exciting, but, you know, hey. Oh, uh, well. There you are. Oh, well. Wherever you go, there you are. Audible.com slash Windows. We thank them so much for their support of Windows Weekly. All right, Polly. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm being handed another. No, no, no. This is no? next. That's next? This is next. <laughs> I'm it. ready. Dr. Nope, Kiki. a piece of paper, I think. Yes, it's a white piece. Dr. Kiki is here. Is She's so great. Did she at least recycle? Have you met Kirsten Sanford ever? No. No. Oh, so. he, she is just wonderful. I'm just a big fan of hers. And uh, she does a show <laughs> called the Dr. Kiki's Big Science Hour on our network. In fact, she does it every nice. Thursday. Lots of science. Oh, lots of science. You know, speaking of which, um, I'm going to meet Dick from the, is it the Gizwiz? Dick uh, DiBartolo's coming to Antarctica. Yeah, I'm going to meet him. So um, I, he actually walked by me uh, last night and I didn't, yeah, it was one of those things I was talking to a couple of guys from Microsoft and I and then I never saw him again. So I guess I'll see him tonight. Well, you know what happened? He got thrown out. What? They said <laughs> we're, yeah, they said we're over capacity, uh, tech press only, sorry. Oh my God! I know. Is wow. that awful? Wow. I, I listen. I can assure you, there was no overcapacity occurring there. You know what I think it was? <laughs> no, don't don't. That'll hurt his feelings even worse. <laughs> oh, no, At least let him believe in the illusion. Oh, I see. I see. I think it was his mustache. <laughs> <laughs> now I may be misremembering it, but but I think he said that maybe it wasn't yesterday's event because we were talking on Tuesday, so it must have been a pre. Yeah. Pre I don't know. Well, you know, it's funny because he did kind of. I saw him once, and then he was gone. Oh, boy. Can you help him there with uh, the folks at Microsoft? Yeah, I'm going I'm to help him with a copy of Windows, certainly. I, no, he'll like that. That'll make him yeah. happy. Yeah. That's a, you know, it's okay. He's just the Gizwiz. He's just uh, Mad Magazine's maddest writer. So you've never met Dick, except for that, that one brief I encounter. Know. Oh, what a great guy. He, he's responsible for much of what I know as knew as a, a budding teenager. Me too. Yeah. So... I, my entire uh, sense of, of uh, a culture. <laughs> yeah, I know, mine too. <laughs> Came it's from sad, years of Mad Magazine. Yeah. It's a little exactly. twisted. It's a little weird, but, yeah. you know. Yeah. So let's talk about your tip of the day, and I hope it's a win. If it's a Vista tip, I'm going to be mad at you. <laughs> it's not. It's not actually a Windows 7 tip either, but uh, in fact, you know, it's funny. My pick is not for Windows 7 either, but that's okay. Okay. So... Um, this one came via email. This is excellent. And it, and it also risks falling into the same category as that uh, supposed IE8, you know, speed up that may or may not do anything. But um, I have noticed this. It's interesting. In the new version of the Zune software, when you do a search, one of the things that Zune does, it's done this before, but uh, it splits the uh, window in half. And on the left half, it shows you the results from your own library. And on the right half, it shows you the results from the online store, right? So in the new version, the results from your own library would come up immediately. And on the, on the right side, there would be this progress bar sitting there, and it would take forever for the results to come back from the store. And it, I've actually noticed this. I, did, I, I didn't think too much of it. I figured, you know, they just relaunched the, you know, with the new device. Maybe there's more people hitting it or, you know, who knows? Uh, uh, who knows? And someone sent me this tip and said, hey, if you go into Internet Explorer, which sounds kind of odd, but you have to remember that Inter Internet Explorer is the sort of gateway for all of your Internet options. Uh, and you go into Options, Internet Options, go to the Connection tab, and uh, click on the Land Settings button and uncheck something called Automatically Detect Settings. This will speed up the search. So I tried it out, and sure enough, when you do this, the search results come back immediately. Wow. Now, I tried this on two PCs, uh, and I saw a, such a dramatic change on both of them immediately because I tested it both ways, with, you know, with and without um, that I'm uh, providing this as a tip, with that sort of caveat that, you know, this <laughs> sounds like some kind of weird black magic. I don't know. But um, when you do this, at least in my experience, it dramatically speeds up how fast this thing returns search results. It's, it's, uh, it's a pretty big change. Oh, uh, uh, I, uh, Dick DiBartolo is in chat right now. Yes. Okay. Well, Dick, 
the Giz Wiz. What happened? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a dramatic. I'm going to have to give you a dramatic yeah. reading of what happened from the chat. Okay. Room. okay. I don't, I don't well, know. he invited me to go on a, like a boat cruise, and I had to do that Microsoft thing, and then of course we're doing it. You'll love Dick. He's one product. of the funniest, nicest yeah. guys ever. Anyway, I wanted I'll, to. See, I saw him very briefly last night. I'll I'll get the story from him later. Okay. Um, so tell me again, how do I how do I do that again? I turn off. Okay, so the easiest way is to open up IE, go yeah. to Tools, and then Internet Options. Okay. And then on the Connections tab, yeah, Connection tab, I guess you will see a button called LAN Settings. When you click that, a little window comes up, and there's one option usually that's checked, and it says Automatically Detect Settings. Oh yeah. So you're saying check. don't 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 manually detect it, just automatically, and it will be faster. No, no, uh, uh, you actually uncheck, uncheck it. Got it. So you will, in fact, be manually detecting settings. Okay, but, but I, there I are no settings. Does. That's for proxies or something. Yeah, I don't know. It's inconceivable why this that's any you know uh, makes a change. But now, if you go into Zoom Market or into Zoom and do a search, you'll see. It, you know, they don't all come out at once, but the results start appearing at once. So. What used to be this blank half of a window where nothing was happening, suddenly you see search results very quickly. That's amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. Good tip. And now, yep. something that won't work with Windows 7, but it is our well, software yeah. of the week. <laughs> it does work with Windows 7, but it's superfluous in Windows 7. Okay. Um, you know, if you're not on Windows 7, or if you're, you, know, you have other PCs that have uh, older versions of Windows. Right. You know, one of the big issues is you have... Uh, all these different types of media files out there, and they don't all run in the native applications that you may use. You know, in Windows 7, they've changed uh, Windows Media Player and Windows Media Center fairly dramatically to work with things like H.264, you know, VC1 Video, AEC Audio, and so forth. But if you want to play that stuff on older versions of Windows, especially if you're running on sort of an older, uh, you know, PC that isn't as fast, you know, you, you can uh, get things like QuickTime, you can get... Uh, you know, VLC player and so forth. Each of these has some issues in my mind. You know, Raphael happens to be a big fan of VLC. And one of the things I was telling him is, you know, my kids have XP. Actually, one of my kids still has XP on a netbook. The other one's on 7. And I'll be moving them both over to 7. But for my daughter, who still has uh, Windows XP, uh, you know, she has VLC on there. And there's no, there's no keyboard command to put that thing into full screen, right, when you're watching a video, which is ridiculous. You have to manually navigate through a menu system. So what I found is uh, there was a, a utility on the Windows side that's been around for years called Media Player Classic. Really well regarded, lightweight, uh, you know, music and video playback and so forth. Designed to work like the really old version of, of Windows Media Player before they made the all-in-one player uh, that debuted in 2001. And the person, I guess, making that stopped making it. But now they've uh, some other people have picked it up. And now it's called Media Player <laughs> I like that. Media player. 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 Uh, oh, boy. Okay. I'm tired. Sorry. Uh, media it's player. Almost over. Classic home cinema. Uh, and it is just a, basically the newest version of this media player <laughs> classic uh, application. Again, you know, minimal footprint. It supports H.264. Full screen is obviously what it should be. Alt, enter. Excellent. It works exactly the way you want. So it's, if you can't have Windows 7 on your system and you want that kind of uh, Windows Media Player style playback of modern video uh, codecs especially, this is the one to get. It's called uh, Media Player <laughs> Classic Home Cinema. Well, that's awesome. Very exciting. <laughs> okay. This has been so fun. In fact, it, what a, I, I'm thrilled that uh, we were able to talk to you in your... Uh, yes. Pathetic hotel room but, in uh, in Manhattan. Yeah, I uh, know. I'm really happy about it. Too. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what, are uh, are you going to get a little nap before your event, or do you have other other Microsoft things to go to? Uh, let's see. It is almost five. I'm gonna I'm gonna get going. I have to I have to actually run downstairs. Uh, they have to uh, ship books to the hotel here. Ah. I need to go see how many there are. <laughs> you know, if I can carry them. Well, everybody um, should I, run out and get Windows Vista. I mean, Windows Seven. Windows Vista. Go get Windows Vista. <laughs> everybody should. Run. We've decided that everybody should go get Windows Vista now. I think after three years, it's safe to say Vista is finally fixed, and maybe this would be a great time to upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> They'll still sell it for a while, right? Sure. Sure. But I think everybody's going to buy Seven. This is. It's clearly. It's a. So. It's clearly time. Yeah. It's um, a winner. It's a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Pod culture yeah. in the chat room says he did the Windows 7 clean install using the upgrade media, just like Paul described. And it worked. And it worked perfectly. Fantabulous. No 
So even though I wasn't able to, in fact, it blue screened right. my Mac. I had a kernel panic. Leo, I, I, I wish I could say you have failed me for the last time, but who are we fooling here? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to talk to you, and uh, you congratulations. Too. We finally can now start talking about Windows 8. We've been holding off. Yes, it's, I, I've been hoping to move along, yeah, actually. It's ready getting, to move. It's getting tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Have a great party at Antarctica, and we'll see you uh, next Thank Thursday. You. Paul Therott is the host and uh, man guy at the Supersite for Windows, WinSupersite.com, news editor for Windows IT Pro, and the author of The Great Windows 7 Secrets, which I have on my Kindle, for full version from Wiley & Sons. So you can buy I'll it. sign it the next time I'm there. Sign my Kindle right on that screen <laughs> there. And I have some, you right. know, an indelible ink for you to use. Like that guy from the, the show you were on, right? The site. Remember that guy? Uh that crazy Dev hair Null. guy that used to write. Dev Null, yeah. No, no, no. no was it? No, what oh, was you talk Cliff Stoll? He, he used to, Cliff Stoll, yeah, yeah, yeah. What he would he used to write on the screen? <laughs> I used to, every time he did that, I'd be like, what? Stop, stop. Oh, yeah, you know, when he was using dry erase, I hope. Uh, yeah. I it's hope. I say, he was kind of nuts. He was nuts, yeah. He, there's a, if you want to see nuts, the, he, there's a TED talk with him on it. And he's oh, yeah. got, his entire talk is written on his hand. Yeah, no, he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's awesome. That's just awesome. Paul, thanks so much. Have a, I hope you get a little rest, but thank you so much for being here. And uh, this is this is really exciting. Thanks for being part of our Windows 7 house party. Good luck with yours. Thank you. We'll see you all next time on Windows Weekly.